Hi guys, Veldon here again, and today I am bringing you the quarterfinal from the Nordic Championship, uh, which is the national level tournament for the Nordic countries, taking place in Uppsala, Sweden. Um, to, so in this game we're going to see Bugge on the left here, who's the Danish player that you might have seen on my streams and uh, YouTube videos here before, uh, since he's played a few games in Malmö with us uh, locally in our regionals and store championships and he is flying the same list or almost the same list maybe the same list that he, he did uh, pretty well in one of our uh, store championships which he got to the final in where he lost to July G's so he's flying Captain Oiken uh, the decimator with Predator Emperor Palpatine and Rebel Captain and he's also got the Iron Projector to keep enemies, enemy ships that bump into Oiken stationary, so he can bump them again. Um, he's got Echo, the Phantom, uh, with Veteran Instincts, Sensor Jammer, Agent Callus, and Advanced Cloaking Device, so it's a very defensive um, Echo here, that gives you a Sensor Jammer, and normally you see Fire Control System on the Phantoms, uh, so this Echo is not going to do as much damage, because it won't have target lock continuously here? Well, never, because it doesn't have the um, the target lock action. And as we're on to the game here, you can see he's just running straight over that with the um, decimator, and then he's going to use Palpatine anyway, because I don't think he's going to need Palpatine for anything else here. And he is following behind with Echo, <coughs> and decides to cloak. On the right here we have Simon, who is uh, from Sweden. I, uh, I think he is uh, from somewhere around Stockholm, and he is uh, flying a version here of PAL Basis. He's got uh, Sintu Fell with Push to Limit, Order Thrusters, Stealth Device, and Royal Guard Tie. And he's got Carnage Jax with Push to Limit, Order Thrusters, Stealth Device, and Royal Guard Tie. And then he's got the Omicron Group Pilot Shuttle uh, with Emperor Palpatine crew. So there are two Palpatines on the board. There's going to be a lot of modifying dice to keep the Echo and the Interceptors alive here. And he is uh, going on towards the top of our screen here with both of his uh, aces here. And he's got Carnage Axe Barrel in, in front of the shuttle. So when the shuttle does the one straight this turn, it will bump and clear the stress. You want to delay the engagement for as long as possible with the um, the champ shuttle because once it gets past it tends not to get back in the fight which doesn't really matter uh, much uh, if you have Palpatine on board because you can still be part of the fight here. Um, Echo decloaks, slight forward bump from the lambda there as predicted and then we have uh, Captain Arkin here who is part skill 4 which means he's going to be moving before the enemy aces here, and that's kind of what he wants to do, because if he bumps them, he'll do damage to them, and they only have three hit points each. Uh, hard three, and then we have a hard two from Echo. And um, cloaking. And it doesn't really do that much that Echo has lower pilot skill than um, the uh, than Sintir fell here, and as you can see, he has uh, initiative, so he's moving before pilot skill like current jack as well, because you want to shoot first, so you can cloak. Uh, you might want to decide to go after current jacks to know where current jacks is, uh, but the repositioning of, from the Phantom is really here in the decloak with the two bank. So it doesn't really do that much, and Brugge is very skilled at flying Echo. He's been top four in at least one of the Danish regionals, I think, and he's been in the final at least in at least one store championship with this list. So um, he knows it by heart. So we have Sundrafell coming on the left side here of the asteroid field. And I think Brugge, is, Brugge really wants to do some, you know, get through the uh, stealth device on one of these interceptors to make them play more defensively. Preferably, since you fell, because he's worth more points. And he is, uh, 
the most dangerous one with the higher pilot skill than Echo. Because he could shoot before Echo cloaks, or he will shoot before Echo cloaks, while Colonel Jack is going to shoot after Echo cloaks. I'm not really sure which ship um, he put Callus on, uh, but uh, I guess he'd done it on Centrifell due to Centrifell shooting before Echo cloaks. And he just managed to squeeze past. I think this is an opening Simon has done several times, so he knows exactly if a move will, will clear or not. Boogie is slow rolling here. He doesn't want to get... I don't think he wants to trade range 3 shots with the shuttle. So he wants to be out of range and then just either scream past or run into it. Echo moves just forward, takes the evade action to, to keep uh, try to stay alive here. As long as um, Carnage Jack is on that side of the board, Echo is happy because Echo needs her tokens for defense, especially against uh, Sinterfell here. But it looks like Carner and the shuttle are going for the decimator. Uh, and Sinter is trying to scare Whisper away, I think. Maybe he will turn Sinter into the asteroid field here, so he will bring all his ships onto Oiken. I think he wants Palpatine off the board, because then Echo is way easier to kill. So if Boogie is thinking like, yeah, he's just going to try to scare me away and just chase Sintir, that might work. So the question is, do you gamble and try to go after Sintir anyway, thinking that he is only scaring you away? Um, so we're going to see here, he's deciding to barrel. I think he wants to stay out of arc, or out of range from the decimator this turn and then hard turn in next turn so that either he or the shuttle will shoot the other one and let's see what he's doing with the center here I'm thinking he's hard turning yeah. he is definitely going for the uh, decimator here with all of his ships which could work uh, it's tricky to have a four dice phantom in your back shooting at you but if your center fell with emperor support you can normally take that uh, the trick is, then you won't have the Emperor helping Karnar, who might get uh, bullied by uh, Captain Oiken. So he's deciding to token up here, or just taking the focus. Uh, he's probably going to shoot the decimator, so that will cap the triggers to be on the second focus here, yes. <coughs> Sorry, that is exactly what he's doing. So the uh, Rebel Captive Triggers, giving him a, uh, a stress, which gives him a second focus token, avoiding being double stressed. That's a good play by Simon. So it looks like two hits into the Decimator at range three. Yeah, he's spending a focus. And he takes a shield. So he got one evade. And then I'm guessing there is no shot from Karnor. Nope. So now we're going to have the range two shot, I think from Echo, which means no auto thrusters. Now let's see how many dice Simon decides to roll here. And it looked like a range two shot, so um, if Whisper gets lucky here on the attack roll, then you can use the Emperor to add a crit. Um, and it looks like, yeah, there's no asteroid. And that looks insanely good. So he's going to use Palpatine on, on one of them, so it looks like four hits. And there's a three blanks and no other thrusters. And he, he's going to use the Emperor. And he's going to use the focus token. So one hit and one crit. This could be the end. But no, no direct damage. But this means Sintru has lost his stealth device and is down to one hit point. That's exactly what Booger wanted, to make sure he can't be too aggressive with Sintra here. It was an insanely good, lucky roll. Uh, and then we have, so it was a damage chance we were right, taking away the action. And we have Predator here as well for the attack from Oiken. Using the focus to, uh, no, okay. Ah, okay, so he did not use the Emperor on the uh, previous attack. He had Callus. But those are easily evaded anyway. Three with auto thrusters. 
and then that's the end of the shooting. <coughs> so let's see. Uh, Boogie is insanely happy. He's got a cloak echo who did two hits to Centur and he only lost a shield on Oiken in exchange. So we have a decloak. Staying at range, going behind Centur, so there is no real chance that Centur can catch Echo here. So Centur needs to stay away both from the bump from Oiken as well as from taking shots from Echo. He has one hit, it all it takes for him to go down. And if he loses Centurion in this turn, I think uh, it's a game over because Echo and Decimator will. Well, they shouldn't have any problem taking out just Connor Jacks and staying away from the uh, Lambda shuttle there. So we have a two bank from Oiken setting up a future bump. Uh, and uh, Simon is bringing the shuttle to protect Centaur next turn, depending on where Centaur is going. But he could turn in in front of Oiken in the next turn in case, because Centaur is probably going for the gap in the center of the board to the left of Oiken. And Booger wants Echo to uh, cover all his barrel the other way here, so it means he has two shots at the uh, shuttle instead, and no shot on Echo from the Lambda class. So he might be letting Sintir get away here, but if he can do enough damage on the Palp uh, carrier instead, because it will take almost three turns for Sintir to come back into the fight. And even if he does, the rebel captive on the decimator will make sure he's still, you know, in danger from taking damage, you know, even if it's only Oiken shooting back. And uh, he decided not to hard turn Connor in here, he decided to play it safe. Uh, so now he's going to have to spend actions to uh, barrel boost to get shots on the decimator. So here, I think he would have preferred now, in retrospect, the hard turn there. Um, Jack's ability isn't that powerful versus a death meter, even if it takes away his focus. Um, so he does the barrel, and I think he will get arc on Lincoln there. And the question is just do nothing and then take the stress from Rebel Captive because if you push you're dead next turn more or less if Echo can catch you so Sunter is indeed bugging out, hard to clean stress and if you boost now there is no way we can, can uh, bump you next turn and yeah he's got a uh, damage sensor array so he's rolling for that and then he is pushing for a second action Otherwise, he would have to use Palpatine there to clear the crit. So I assume he's going to boost to the right to get the rock between himself and Echo, as well as getting a focus token for the stress. Yeah, it looks like that's exactly what he's decided to do here, because he will also have auto thrusters against the decimator. So this turn, I think Boogie could just throw everything he has at the shuttle. Or he could go hunt for the uh, interceptors. I mean, yeah, Connor Jack is going to be without tokens. So maybe you shoot Connor Jack with the decimator and you try to get lucky shooting Centaur with Echo. <coughs> so at least we have um, Echo shooting first. So yeah, it looks like he's going to go range two through a rock, it looks like. If you get the same kind of dice he did last turn, but he did not, he got two blanks. Looks like he actually got nothing. Well, one from Callus, which there is no way in the world. But he has to use his. Uh, actually, he has to use Palpatine to stay alive. So, um, range one from Connor, it looks like. The Echo Cloaks and Stress from Rebel Captive and it looks like 3 hits or maybe 2 hits and a crit but we're still shields taking away from the, the Captain there 
And now the question is, where do we shoot? I would have, I would, have, I would shoot uh, Colin O'Hare because he's took unless and the Palpatine uh, has been used. But he might be tempted to try to finish out Sintir. But Colin is range one man. Uh, okay, so he did shoot at. Oh, he can't spend the focus. So he's going to use Predator. And he's going to use Palpatine for two hits and a crit. And all the thrusters and focus. So yeah, if he had targeted uh, Karner, he would have gotten damage through, probably even though Karner has four dice. And then we have the shuttle, range one on Oiken. This will hurt because he also has a target slot, which he doesn't even need to spend. So it looks like three hits and crit to going into Oiken there. So get a stress. So that was a good round of shooting from Simon. He took no damage and did seven or six into Oiken. So the, making it slightly more even here. So decloak, go next turn, setting up the hard turn one. Or maybe he's doing a three bank, trying to catch Karno here. And one bank, covering some tears of retreat with the lander. I think that's a good call. Um, you don't want the decimator chasing down some tear, risking him to catch him and doing that last damage. I mean, you could have done a stop maneuver to get another close range shot at the decimator probably would have been good as well because you already did have the target lock on the, that one however there might have been a, a bump move from Boogie planned into the lambda in case that is what he did oh there is the one hard so that looks like a yeah, range two shot at the lambda and then let's see here what Colonel Jack is doing probably doing a straight move or hard turning away green Doing stress. Yeah, he's hard turning away. No, ooh, he's actually trying to green behind him. So that's going to be a bump. So we might have the iron projector trigger here. Mm, that looks like he did get the iron. So you know what Colonel Jack is going to do next turn. Which means you could probably set up a really good shot with Echo there if you decloak towards Simon's end of the board and then doing a really fast move. Sinter is bugging out, three straight. Probably gonna go to a boost, try to come around. He's going that way, interesting. Maybe should have gone the other way to make it slightly harder for uh, Echo. I'm thinking if he wants to barrel as well. I mean, if he does a barrel roll, he could 3k next turn. Or he could hard shoot the left to the left. Yeah, he's deciding to barrel as well. So he's going to get the focus on the stress. And then we have the shooting phase, which means corner might shoot. Or Echo might shoot corner, but it looks like he's out of range. Or no? No, that looks like a range three who wants to target corner. Let's see who he's shooting at. Looks like two hits, so he's thinking about using Palpatine. And he does add well, so yes, he used Palpatine. And oh, he's shooting at the uh, Lambda. He's using the focus to evade one, so two shoots down. I believe. I'm not really sure here. Yeah. Then it looks like there was no damage done to Echo in return. And then we're on to the next turn here. So now we have the decloak. Yeah, he's going to the far side of the asteroid, staying outside of the clusters because it could be tricky trying to decloak in there. And you have the echo banks to cloak. And we have a 
two bank from the shuttle, which looks like it clears the asteroid just perfectly. And then he's going to take a focus action. And then we have Oiken. So he's hard turning behind. Let's see if this clears the rock. It should be just, yeah, perfect. So another range one into the shuttle, it looks like. And, or, or you could, yeah, he decides to target Lock Connor because Connor is probably going to be at range one from like in here after his uh, ionized move. And then we have like a hard three or a three bank from Echo here. Looks like it might be a two hard. And that means you will probably have to do a barrel roll here. Because the one straight barrel to the right could take Connor out of Echo's arc, or you just don't. Well, you don't want a Connor shooting at you to the side at range one. So yeah, he's gonna probably gonna barrel roll to the left here. Uh, so best case scenario for Simon is that he could boost barrel roll to get out of arc of Echo, but then he will still be taking shots from the decimator. Or maybe not, maybe both of the both the decimator and echo will shoot at the uh, lambda, if that is what uh, Simon is doing here with Connor. Let's see, so he's going to do the one straight move from the ion. So if he barrels to the right and then boosts to the right, he should be able to get out of arc of echo. But still take damage or take shots from the decimator. I don't think he wants to shoot the decimator here because it will trigger Rebel Captive again, which has proven to be the best card almost in, in Bugis' uh, list so far. So Simon is really thinking about this. Um, well, either you token up where you are and hope for the best, you have Palpatine support and four green dice. Oh, he's trying to boost. Well, no, that won't fit. Doing a barrel to the right instead, let's see. You can do this so you can get out of arc from Echo with act landing on the asteroid. Oh, that looks very close to the asteroid. He should have been slightly more back. So it looks like the rock was in the way. He should have been slightly more back the barrel there, easy for us to say, as we can see afterwards. Um, so he's going to probably just push for a focus here, or an evade. Yeah, an evade, it looks like. And I hope he can weather the storm, or maybe Boog is just going to decide I'm just going to shoot into the lambda, trying to take Palpatine out of the equation here. So we have another hard turn by Sin 2. Probably followed by a barrel roll. Still out of range. Might be range three. Uh, but range three with our thrusters is even with only well, four green die from the range. Palpatine support shouldn't be too damaged. The, the, the trick is here he's got two interceptors he needs to protect, and he can't use Palpatine on both. Uh, so now he has a rock as well between himself and the uh, decimator, so that was a good move. The thing is, he's not doing any damage. Well, he's gonna may he might want to do some damage into Oiken this turn, but then he will be double stressed. So this is five dice into Carnage Jax. Using Palpatine. And Palpatine falls over. And there's a lot of squiggles, it looks like. He's going to use Palpatine. So maybe it is a focus he still has, so he might be thinking about actually shooting into the decimator here. And Echo Cloaks. So that was not what we wanted. We wanted to at least get one damage through to take the uh, 
stealth of Karner there, because oh, then it will be way, mu way much easier for Oiken to, to shoot at him. We need it in a way, because he still has it in case Oiken decides to shoot him. But I think I would have spent the evade and kept Palpatine instead, it's the same effect. Well, actually, no, it's not. You can get one more with the token, so... Predator here? No, he's going to use the target lock. And one for auto thrusters. And one for the token. So that's one hit, one crit going through. And taking Connor's stealth away. So that's exactly, well, that's more likely what Booger wanted, but I think he wanted that on the original shot. So he spent the turret lock here, and there is no shot from Sintir. So we're into the No, oh, they're checking where all the all the tokens were supposed to be. He's not going to shoot with Connor because he does not want to get double stressed. Because he should would probably be dead next turn. So here we have the decloak, staying behind Connor Jax. And actually also threatening the flank of Sintir if Sintir turns in for the decimator. Because he Simon wants Sintir has to have no stress, shoot first, take the level cap distress, and then shoot with uh, Karner into the decimator. He tries to set up a block, which I think he succeeded with, which will place Oiken on the rock. That's a good move. <coughs> Sorry, that's a good move by Simon. And risky by not going on the outside. Um, so we'll see if it pays off for Simon here or not. He needs to do some serious damage to Oiken here in order to have a chance. So next up is uh, Echo, who's doing a hard something. Three, because he will be able to shoot at the shuttle, he will be able to shoot at Sintir, and he might be able to shoot at Connor, checking range to see if he can take the evade. Yeah, he's decided that he's just out of range one. So is this a bank two or a hard two? It's a bank, oh, he's, he's actually bugging out. Better safe than sorry. I don't think he was anticipating Boogie's decimator to be on the rock, because if he had been, he would have loved to be just behind it. But he was probably afraid of the uh, ion projector, because if you bump into that ship, it, it will trigger if Boogie wants, because he can use Palpatine on the roll. Bank. Sintra going either for the decimator with a boost here, or I think he might have arc where he is, so he decides to um, token up, so he's probably going for Echo. As Echo is not cloaked, but he does have uh, an evade token, the Emperor and Callus. So, oh, they forgot the roll for the damage of the rock, so they did it there. So, I can shoot it down to seven hit points. Then we have a range 2 shot from Sintir into Echo here. And he's going to use his focus for 3. And he's going to spend Callus. And he's going to use the Emperor. And he's going to use his Evade to clear it all. So new damage into Echo. And this is exactly when. You want Karna to be close to Echo to take those tokens away, but well flung by Booger to make sure that never happened when they were actually shooting at each other. So three hits back. And then a cloak. So Sintra is going to spend one of his tokens to be safe. Feels like those two can shoot each other all day long, as long as the Emperor starts to protect Echo, and neither one will do any damage now. So, new turn. We have an aggressive 
deep work here by Echo, not going to the far side down here, uh, to the bottom. Uh, I'm thinking maybe he thinks Sintry will hard turn two for him if you do that, so he's going to go past him instead. Maybe try to take out the Lambda shuttle. But it's still at five and three shields, I think. So it will probably take two rounds of shooting. Or if you do get range one from Echo and range one from from Moiken, you could take it all in one round, but I wouldn't count on it. So Moiken gets off a rock with a straight move. Still needs to roll for the rock though. That looks like uh, another damage. So should be six hit points left on Moiken. But I don't think he's taking any shots this turn, unless Simon is sending Sintir after Oiken here. So there's the two back, and he could now barrel to get out of arc of the Lambda, which I think is the uh, prudent thing. The question is, where do you decloak next turn after that? Could you decloak a two back to the right, past the shuttle? Probably not. Maybe I think the rock will be in the way. Uh, so Boogie is definitely thinking about if he should stay where he is, taking four dice from the shuttle, or barreling to the outside. I think he needs to barrel to be. Oh, he takes. It doesn't a focus token. Maybe he, there is no arc. Maybe the the lambda is actually out of arc already. Uh, it's hard to tell from this angle. So here comes Connor Jax trying to get back into the fight. So we'll take at least another turn, maybe two, before he has shots again. And uh, let's see if he's sending Sunter after Oiken or he's just he's going to the right here. <laughs> he's going to the right here. He probably anticipated a decloak down towards the corner, uh, as did I. So that was a good move by Boogie. Because this means the interceptors will have no shots this turn. And depending on the angle, maybe the lambda also is without shots. And then we will do some serious damage to the shuttle. So I'm thinking the quickest way to get back in the fight is probably a barrel to the left backwards. I don't want to get in the way of the corner here because corner is going to move first. Oh, he decides to boost instead to get around the bottom rock here. So we have uh, Echo shooting first, range one into the uh, lambda. That's a lot of symbols, so I guess that's five hits if he spends his focus token. And nothing, so he might as well use Palpatine here on defense, so four damage. And Echo Cloak, so that should be three shields. And the damage. Oh, was a crit. And or you can, or, or Boogie hasn't just used his Palpatine yet, so now we're going to shoot. Looks like maybe just range one. Mm. Yeah, he did spend his focus. And that looks like a lot of symbols again. So he's going to use Predator first. And he's going to use Palpatine to make it a crit. So this could be the end of the shuttle. And the two banks, blanks, I think it is. Yes. That's the end of Palpatine. Or uh, Simon's Palpatine, at least. So uh, this game is now biggest to lose here, because now there is no Palpatine to protect the Isis of Simon here. So we have a no decloak it looks like. 
Uh, if we are looking at the points, Boogie is losing half points of uh, Captain Oiken, and he just killed 29 points. So I think Boogie is actually losing on points. He needs to kill one of the interceptors to take the lead. So that's a hard two. I think it's, it's an evade. So let's see if we get a really aggressive move here. No, Simon is playing the safe sword, so I think he needs to scale and go away and try to kill the decimator before he loses one of his interceptors. This is actually very close on points. This could be a, a tie. I don't know exactly how many points. Is, is like 40. Oaken is 43. Let's see. 49, 50, 51, 58. So that's. They might actually be exactly tied right now. 29 to 29. Which means Boogie is. Is closer to defeat because if he loses all game, then he's only on six hit points, which could be just one round of shooting from these interceptors. Uh, however, Oiken is at or uh, Fell is at one hit point, and Jax is at two hit points, so one good round of shooting from Echo could be enough to kill either one of them. So, this is a really intense game here now. Any mistakes would be hard to recover from. So let's see. Uh, okay, we we'll have a decloak this turn. Uh, so what Simon needs to do is to stay away from Waken because if Waken can just run into one of those aces, preferably soon to fail who is only at one hit point. He'll be game over. Three hard focus. Uh, the three hard from Echo. Go in behind. Setting up to follow seat, follow behind uh, the decimator next turn. If you decloak two bound to the left next turn, and then hard turn in behind. And Jax runs away, it looks like. If this should go to time at the exact same point, and there is a final salvo, there's going to be nine dice for Simon and seven dice for Boogie. So uh, that would be in Simon's favor. So Boogie is the one. I think he's pushing for the win here, if I've done the math correct. So Centur is coming around. But he doesn't want to go head on with the Decimator because he doesn't want the Orkin bump to kill him. So yeah, he's boosting away. So it looks like no range. So a new turn. There we go. He's decloaking towards his own board edge, setting up a hard turn, or maybe a bank. And then we have a three bank move. Oh, that looks like he might be on the rock. Maybe not. It's going to be very close. Yeah, he, he placed him on the rock. Let's see if this was a mistake that was needed for he decides to take the damage, no Palpatine here. In case of Suntur is turning in here, I don't think Suntur is turning in because there's no way Simon is going to risk that. Because if Boogie did, you know, a straight move, and, and, and uh, because I think that's what Simon would have thought he did, it's, and uh, Suntur also turns in, so the, uh, the decimator will be on him and try to bump him next turn. Connor is running away at the top. So next turn he might face off with Echo. So he's thinking, do I boost? Do I barrel to keep distance? Maybe the three bank from uh, Boogie was planned. He didn't care about it because he's thinking 
There is no way Sintra is turning it in front of the decimator. He needs to run around the rock. And so he thought, like, oh, yeah, if I end up on the rock, I don't care, because next turn I can still go full forward straight. Maybe catch Sintra. So there was a boost by Connor, and then we're on to Sintir, who is doing a, yeah, he's doing a three bank, he's using the rocks for cover, he needs to get away from Oiken, but I think a fourth straight now will clip him next turn, so he needs to boost the barrel, and then of course Boogie can instead hard turn to the left to cut between those two big rocks at the top and then, you know, try to catch Sintir there. So he is barrel rolling. Okay, he's barrel rolling backwards. That might, now he's just barrel rolling straight to the right. Because he could hard turn one to the left next turn to cut the other way in case or can cut between those asteroids, and that's probably a good move. But I think he is now forcing Oiken to just go straight. So let's see, we have a deep cloak to the right here. By Echo, keeping his distance and his guns pointed at the enemy interceptors here. Mm. Oh, that's insanely smart, maybe because he's actually deciding I'm not going to care about the rock. I'm going to end up here, take a damage, and next turn almost having a guaranteed hit on Sintir, unless Sintir one hearts to the left, which I don't think Simon has uh, gambled on, because if you gamble wrong, you're dead. That's a clever move by Booger. And even if Sintry is doing the one hard, he's set up to chase uh, Connor instead. So there's the movement barrel roll from Echo, trying to get Arc on uh, Connor. So Connor needs to go fast to avoid a potential bump from uh, the decimator next turn. So now he's going to face the dice of Echo instead. He decides to token up, focus away from push there. And this is the important one. Let's see what he did. He did, oh, he did a three bank. Can he get, no, there is no way he can get away from Waken here. He, if he boosts, he can barrel to the left. He can boost and barrel to the right, but Waken will still catch him. He could barrel towards the edge of the board, the top to force Oiken to go off the board the round after he bumps into him. Here yeah, we're talking about the uh, potential moves to get out of the uh, bump there. So I think anyway Simon could just decide to go to the right here. That means unless he uh, decides not to bump him, uh, the decimator will go off the board the following turn because there's just not enough room. Uh, however, trading Sintir for de the Decimator here is in Boogie's favor because Echo is more expensive than Connor Jacks. And then uh, Echo can just cloak and take face. Or focus, doesn't matter. Just to make sure Connor Jacks does not get any shots. Or very few shots. So do you boost and try to get out of arc? Or out of range? Or bump next turn, or do you just decide, oh, I'm going to barrel roll to, the, yeah, that's exactly what Simon is doing here, he's barrel rolling to the right, so if Brigitte wants to bump him to death, the decimator will go off the board the following turn. I think it's the best call Simon could do here, and then he just needs to do his best to try to get shots at Echo with Connor, which of course is not impossible, but it's going to be tricky, and Echo is probably going to be cloaked for the rest of the game. So, oh, four hits. And symbols, which means should be four evades anyway. So he avoids all those hits from Echo, but Echo cloaks. Three dice back, which now is more or less harmless. 
due to the sensor jammer as the focus was already spent on defense. So we're back in dials because I can come shoot east on a rock. So I can is just going to go straight and kill Centir and the next turn go off the board. So it's going to be the, the fact there's no deep loop. Oh, he's going to try to stay on the board here by doing a two bank because he will bump and kill. Centir. And maybe a hard two. Keep him on the board. Let's see when they're done if we think a hard two. Ooh, it's going to be close. I think hard two still takes him off the board. That was a good call by, by Boogie. It's probably the best maneuver he could, he could do. It's going to be close if the um, top left uh, edge of his base goes beyond the boundaries of the map or not. So it's a two straight. And as Connor is stressed, he can't K-turn. There's no way there's going to be a shot of Echo this turn. And uh, if he bumps, uh, the Decimator will also have a shot without any tokens on Connor except he can use artifacts. So there's also that. But it looks like uh, he's not going to risk that. He's just going to go straight here. He was probably thinking that Echo might decloak to get distance. And I think Brigitte decided I'm going to do this, try to block. Maybe get a range 3 shot on corner with the decimator without any tokens. So there's going to be no decloak, and let's see. No, he's going to be off the board. Yep. So we now have an untouched Echo versus a 3 point Corner Jax. And Corner Jax needs to kill Echo because uh, Echo costs small points. And Echo has decided to just remain cloaked and just go for forward here. And then he will probably take a, an evade. There's not going to be any shots on him this turn. So let's see what um, has hard turning one. Trying to get back into chasing Echo for us as quick as possible. The trick is, though, the way Echo decloaks, if he decloaks, it's almost impossible to uh, to guess correctly and then just Boogie might decide no I'm not going to decloak so it looks like he is decloaking this turn to get to distance and then he is revealing a free bank as well so that's a really long move and then he cloaks back and if we have a 4 or 5 straight here or he's taking a bank it's actually Okay, and then if he barrels, maybe he will have a good line for next turn, if it fits. Let's see, there's that big rock. No, it fits perfectly. So the trick is, of course, trying to guess where Echo is going to decloak, or if she's not decloaking. Because a two-bank decloak and then a four straight will put you, like, in the center of the board near Simon's Edge. But if you decloak to the right backwards and then hard turn away. You will be in the center of the board at the top with that two bank. Uh, well not, uh, not that far, but a bit that way. So it's going to be interesting. Is there out of range for shooting? So let's see what uh, Boogie decides to do here. Do you do the two bank and then a full speed maneuver? No, nope, he's going to decloak towards the corner there. And setting up for either a hard one or a bank, slow bank. Yep, so if Connor Jax comes, he can shoot first before cloaking. I think that's the uh, best call he could have done there. And let's see what Simon thought he would do. Okay, he decided to go. Oh, that's close to the rock. He's on the rock. No, Connor. So it looks like no damage. And that's the end of the game from time anyway. So well flown for both of you guys here. It was amazing to see Boogie's final echo and those 
I don't care about the asteroid moves by the Emperor. Simon is doing well as well. He had a really bad role in the opening, getting to hits into his uh, center. So thank you for watching, and uh, stay tuned as we will be uh, we'll soon, soon have the semifinal, one of the semifinals uh, live here. So yeah, thank you for watching.